Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Tom's. Today we're looking at the Magnify Text tutorial. So I have my texture in front of me and we have the Magnify Text up. It's Breeze Serif Bolt and we have our texture here. This texture was created by accident and I liked it. I did some color to it and decided to keep it for this tutorial but you may not necessarily want to use this texture. However, I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. It was just as I was messing about with some notes. So let's go ahead and just go to share the editor and see this. Just gonna hit um, Shift and F3 with our cursor hovering the dope sheet here. And that will navigate to the shader menu here. Just gonna hit Control and Spacebar on my keyboard and that will enlarge the current active window that I'm on. And we can see the texture corners here. I'm pretty sure there's easier ways to create this but this is how I created it myself so you can use this if you wish cool let's go ahead and hit control spacebar and let's keep it in shade of view here so let's go ahead and create the magnifying glass I'm going to hit shift and A I'm going to navigate to mesh I'm going to select UV sphere we're using the Cartesian plane that is where the Y is on the vertical and the X is on the horizontal so keep this in mind as you are create, following this tutorial so we have the sphere here, I just have it in the center good, just press tab we want to scale it from top to bottom so I'm just going to rotate this on the X by 90 so that the lines are moving from top to bottom or bottom to top um, and then we're going to go ahead and hit S and Y to scale it on the Y axis here I'm going to scale it on the Y to get it as thin as possible <coughs> You may need to revisit this, so don't worry too much about it. I'm going to hit R and X at 90 so that the magnifying glass is facing the magnifying text and facing me, the viewer. And we're going to add some shader parameters or some shader nodes. So let's go ahead and add them. I'm going to hit Shift and Space, Control Space Bar, sorry. Let's just enlarge this so that we can see this a bit better. And we're going to go ahead and add a Refraction BSDF. I'm going to add a glass BSDF. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and add an add shader. And we're going to enter in the glass at the top and the fraction at the bottom. It doesn't really matter here, but that's the order I used. Cool. Let's go ahead and hit control and spacebar to go back to the original view so we can see what we're actually doing. We can see that the sphere has gone white but we're not seeing through it so we have to change some parameters in our panel options so first we have to go to our render panel um, that's this camera here uh, we have to navigate to screen space refractions make sure this is ticked it's not ticked by default and make sure refractions is ticked as well because that's also not ticked by default then we have to go to the materials tab go to blend mode enable alpha blend and go to screen space refraction and enable that and once we've enabled the speed screen space refraction in the um, material, we should see through the magnifying glass. Cool. And we can see that the add is making it sort of bright. So let's go ahead and bring down the white here to about a gray. So that it's around the same color as the um, background here. <coughs> and now we can move on into doing some editing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a camera data um, node. I'm gonna add a mapping node as well. Cool. Let's go ahead and change this to normal. Let's put the view vector to the mapping and let's put the vector to the normal of both the glass and the refraction shader. Cool. With this, we can see that we've gotten a smoother result here looks a lot cleaner than it was before let's take it off so you can see the difference cool we can see that we had more um, distortion from the lens let's go ahead and add the normal right but more importantly we can play about with the normal of the refraction so that we can get different effects so we see that the text is doing some minor um, zooming here or some minor magnifying um, to increase the magnif mag uh, magnification intensity all we have to do is move this on the z-axis as we G and Z we can see we get a larger magnify Q next and we're getting some really nice results here 
looking really good. Cool. And then what we can do now, if we want special effects or we want to change the angle of the normal, we can use some of these parameters here. So we can scale it here. We get across to stretch it out on the Y, on the Z, to increase it on the Z axis here. In case we need to do a quick zoom, but we don't necessarily want to move the magnifying glass. Also, we can use the rotation to get some different effects as well. And depending on how, what you're looking for. Cool. Play about with that. <coughs> also, we can go ahead and scale it back on the Y. Or say on the Z now because we did rotate it. So we we'll say S Z. Scale it back on the Z. And as we do so, we notice that we're getting some really interesting distortion effects. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. And the more that we scale this on the X, right, the more we have some interesting distortion and we can increase that intensity with the scale on the normal. And we can see this looks actually really nice for a glitch effect. So even though we're not using glitch right now, we can see how this would be helpful for glitch. <coughs> but when I go into the glitch tutorial, we'll go over things like this as well. Cool, so let's return it to back what it was. And this is the magnifying glass. Okay, let's go ahead and create our frame and handle. So we're going to go to Shift and A, and let me just actually bring this window down so that we can see our window better. We can even hit Control and Space just to take that out because we're not going to need that for now. So let's go ahead and hit Control and A, sorry, Shift and A, sorry, and let's create a circle. I'm going to put it to 64 vertices because I don't want any bends. I don't want any um, polygon looks in the circle here. I want it to look as perfect as I can get it here I think 64 is good let's go ahead and scale it up a bit press tab to go to edit mode mesh circle okay make sure I think I'm in the wrong edit mode yeah let's select vertices here make sure your vertices are selected here and we're going to go ahead and press E for extrude S on our keyboard for scale and we're going to push the mouse towards the 3d cursor cool once we have a decent frame size here we're going to scale it up and we want to maneuver it where the lens is so if we take a look here we can see that the because the lens is um transparent it's kind of difficult for us to maneuver the ring where this um refractive magnifying glass is come is it's going to be a bit difficult even when we change the world it's going to blend in with the color of the world so to what i'm going to do instead is i'm trying to maneuver it via the 3d viewport I'm just going to go ahead and hit shift and s with my magnifying le lens selected i'm going to set the cursor to selected then i'm going to hit the newly created frame we hit shift and s again i'm going to say cursor to selected um section to cursor sorry with that is exactly where we want it to be let's go ahead and scale it in so that it covers the lens this looks about right and then we're going to press tab on our keyboard go to edit mode press a to select all vertices press e to extrude and it will normally extrude on the z first and then it's going to hit g and z just to line this up again cool and we notice now that as we've done this and put the lens in the center we're getting some refractive information from the actual frame itself and we don't want this so first let me pair with the magnifying glass to the frame and now let's get rid of this um, refractive light here so what i'm going to go do is hit control and spacebar so that we can bring up a our panel options here because we're going to need the panel options we're going to go to materials and i'm going to select the frame let's go ahead and cl click new to create a new material let's use say emission for now let's go ahead and let's create an emission material it's not necessary but what we need to do next is um change the blend mode to alpha blend now this is a bug i think but it's a bug that works in our favor because the moment we use alpha blend it the refractive index no longer affects it 
and so we get rid of this un unwanted refractive information cool <coughs> so let's go ahead and add a color to this I'm going to put this into a dark blue <coughs> closer to the purple here something like here yeah this looks about right cool let's move on to our handle so for our handle because our 3d cursor is in the same place we don't have to worry about where our box is going to land i'm going to create a cube with shift and a we can see the cube is right where we want it let's go ahead and hit g and x and move it to the edge of the frame here and we're going to go ahead and hit s and z scale on the z-axis here cool it's a bit on the fixed side let's hit s and y to make it slightly thinner and let's make it slightly smaller as well cool so that we have the first section of this then we're just going to go ahead and go to face select um, in fact let me just make it slightly smaller i think this is good let's go to face select here and in edit mode by pressing tab Cool, and then we're going to go ahead and extrude with E. Cool, and then we're going to press S to scale up. Cool, I'm going to hit S to scale up. And so extrude and S. Let's go ahead and do this again. Extrude and S to scale this up. About here looks good. Let's go ahead and hit extrude again and bring this handle out. Cool. I think this length is about right, maybe slightly long. Let's use G and X to bring it back a bit. Yeah, I think this is about right. Let's go ahead and hit S and X, S and Y, sorry, to sort of thicken the handle a bit. Cool, and I'm going to hit S and X for the whole object here, S and Y, sorry, just to make the handle slightly smaller. Cool, then we're going to go over to our bezel, our bezel tool here. Cool, and let's go ahead and select these edges. So let's go and use edge select. I'm going to select these two edges here at the bottom. I hit Control and B. Cool. Now, if your bevel is giving you problems with the ratio of the corner, just make sure you go into um, object mode, hit Shift and A, so Control and A, sorry, and apply the scale, and this should correct it so that you get a even bezel on both of these sides here my scale is already set so i don't have to do that so using using the bezel is to control and b to activate the bezel and we're just pulling the mouse in and out to determine how thick the how far the radius goes and we're just scrolling the mouse button up and down to determine the amount of divisions that we want the bevel to have i think this is about right don't need to change that much All right the handle is a bit thick on the, the um, depth size, let's go ahead and hit G and Z, S and Z, sorry, just to fit it a bit. And we have our handle. So, all you have to do is add some colors. Let's go ahead and just link this here, link materials. Let's go ahead and just select the faces of this here. Cool. Select the faces of this right here, and we're going to add some color to this here now let's create a pink create a new material and just assign and we have our lens that's all you have to do here and our frame our lens and our handle let's compare the handle to the frame keep transform and then we can just move the entire thing with the handle and that's our magnifying glass handle Okay, so we're going to take a look at the animation of this preview here. We're just going to go over as an overview here. So let me just go ahead and hit Shift and 12 so that the dope sheet is activated. And let's come out of the camera view to see what's actually happening. Cool. So to create the vertical effect or what we know as the dolly zoom effect here, where the background is moving up as the foreground is moving down and we call this the dolly effect or the vertical effect it kind of gives you a kind of dizzying look like the world is distorting around you cool. this effect here that we're using 
is simply just a zoom in just a Z transformation here of the lens of the um, magnifying magnifying glass and the background cool have a section where it's doing the opposite and it's upside down cool so have it zoom in and zoom out and to separate the frames here let's go ahead and show you how I do it the frames we're just animating the camera slightly and we're animating the background cool so as we reach the next scene here I've just made the keyframes come together exactly so that there's no difference here so it looks like it's a frame cut a scene cut but really we're on the same camera but for the last animation here where we just have the the lens rotate across the magnifying glass we do actually use a marker and change to another camera so if we take a look here here is the second camera it's the first one and then we move on to the second camera to get to finish the effect cool so a simple Z transform on the background and a Z transform on the magnifying glass will get you this effect the only thing that's different here than the original is that I added these screen lights here and these are just simply um, some curves that I've added here and just added a thickness to the depth <coughs> excuse me so if we look at the depth I just added some thickness to it cool and then made the alpha blend so it doesn't give us any refractions and that is the magnifying glass tutorial if you enjoy the tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions be sure to ask you can leave your comments in the in the comment section happy to hear them happy to hear from you glad that some of you are really liking the tutorials happy that it's helping a lot of persons i search for these answers a lot for myself so i'm just happy to put all of them in one place so that persons looking to do 2d motion graphics can find them in one place right? we'll also be looking at 3d motion graphics as well but for the most part it's going to be 2d cool so until i see you again in another tutorial get up and design a new door later